Even in June, it takes time to warm up at dawn when you're at 7,000 feet. The cowboys know the journey that's about to get underway here. The cattle? Well, they've got no idea. The Heaton family needs to get these 200 mama cows and calves to grazing pastures for the summer. It's a 30-mile journey that begins just outside the tiny town of Alton, Utah, in a place called Rush Meadow. The trek will take the cattle over a mountain range and through the expansive pastures of the Dixie National Forest. It's no small task. To get them there, they call in family members from around the region and invite guests who pay money, big money, to turn a cattle drive into a vacation. It's a safe bet to say that at this hour, the guests have little idea what's in store. And frankly, neither do we. Leading this drive is Dustin Cox, not a Heaton by birth, but married to Harmony Heaton. Harmony, along with their four girls, yes, all four, are on horseback for this journey. Ready? One, two, three. The family members that are here to help aren't full-time cattle ranchers, but young and old, they saddle up to pitch in. How are you, Angelica? Good. Do you want this stuff? And it doesn't take long for their help to be critical to the effort. The first stretch of this journey is the toughest, straight up the side of a mountain. This is pretty steep, but the cattle seem to be doing just fine. We'll see how we do. Within minutes, it feels like controlled chaos. <laughs> barely controlled chaos. The problem is to go down in the woods, get off the trail. So you gotta get off your horse and go down there and get him. Hey, hey, hey! Get off! It's a nearly 2,000 foot climb. The dust, the noise, the brush and trees, it's enough to rattle the sturdiest of cowboy nerves. And for the city slicker guests who are along for the ride, it's a heck of a way to learn by doing. Yep. 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 We reach a clearing almost at the top of the mountain. The view of the valley below is simply breathtaking. But there's way too much going on here to get lost in the moment, and it's a long way down. After another climb, we find a perfect clearing for resting. For the crew, but more importantly for the cattle. That gives me a chance to check in on one of the guests, Susan Murphy. She's a direct marketing account exec from Atlanta. It's been an amazing experience. Today's been a little full on. Uh, lots of excitement, anticipation, uh, cows kind of going everywhere, people everywhere. Isn't that wild? Yeah. Yeah, it, it's definitely been uh, a full throttle experience, I would say. <laughs> I nearly fell off my horse. Uh, it was it was pretty pretty hectic. Cattle drives on horseback were a common sight in the West. In the mid 1800s, millions of head of cattle were driven from Texas to stockyards in the Midwest, sometimes for hundreds of miles. The expansion of the railroad and meatpacking plants ended the need for driving cattle across the countryside. But the mystique of the cowboy culture that it created lives on today. The desire to capture that mystique is what brought Pat McAteer all the way from Ireland to the mountains of Utah. It's an opportunity for him to experience firsthand what Carl Heaton has been doing for nearly 40 of his 65 years. Carl is on foot. He's climbed up and down this mountain twice this morning. On foot, he can go into the trees and chase cattle that have strayed, places that his horse-bound brethren sometimes dare to go, but can quickly run into problems. 
Carl is the patriarch of this drive. He carries the slight smile of a cowboy who's seen just about everything, but keeps his opinions to himself. After our four hour uphill climb through brush and trees, the pasture we reach on the other side of the mountain feels like a whole new world. The cows rest and eat. So do the horses and the cowboys. These breaks also give the mamas and calves a chance to find each other again. If any calves wander off during the drive, it's in their nature to return to the last place that they were with their mothers. It's a relaxing stop that doesn't last long. The second part of our journey is much easier. A flat, open valley with lush grass, flowing creeks. After a few more hours, we're at the campsite for the night. Thomas, I, I wouldn't have expected this. Uh, probably whenever I looked at cattle drives, it was over green fields. Maybe John Wayne and Cole uh, pushing the cattle. Yeah. Didn't realize just what the terrain would be like. And Coming up a mountain was not part of the equation. Well, no. <laughs> How do you prepare for that, you know? Uh, before I came over here, I climbed a couple of mines at home, thinking, yeah, that would prepare us for going up and downhill. Didn't realize it was going up the side of a building. It was crazy, wasn't it? It was different. It was challenging, but it was very rewarding when you know you were able to get the cat to the top of it. My legs are tired from kicking this oh, first day. Because well, yeah. I really had to get smoky to go up those sides where they're big logs. I think he was a little spooked. And I really had to kick him hard. The evening draws to a close with an opportunity for the guests to reflect on the first day of the drive. Besides Pat and Susan, there's Chris from Philadelphia. It was hard work, but... Bill from Southern California and Jacqueline from Long Island. It was tough. A lot tougher than I thought it was going to be, but it was fun, real challenge. Couldn't relax for a second. <laughs> the next morning, Carl is up making pancakes long before most of us greenhorns are awake. Good morning. Good morning. How are we doing? Well, we're doing pretty good. What was it about the cattle drive that you wanted to experience? Uh, I watched a movie on, on New Year's Eve with my mom. It was called The Bucket List. <laughs> and it was about the sort of things that you'd want to do before you kicked the bucket. Not that I want to die, but, <laughs> you know, I'd like to think that over the next 20 years, there'll be something I'll do every year. And I thought, well, this was a good one to start with, so. What did I hear you say? Uh, you don't think you'd want to be a cowgirl, is that right? <laughs> uh, it's a lot of work. I think, uh, I think for the moment, I, I don't see myself being a cowgirl, maybe a part-time cowgirl. <laughs> cowgirl every once in a while. But you'd do it again? Oh, yeah. After breakfast, we return to the nearby pasture where the cattle were left to graze and rest overnight. We're in the Dixie National Forest now, where the Heaton family has grazing rights for several hundred acres of pasture. They've scattered out, and so we'll need to go up the sides. We'll need to watch the sides good, and then we'll just take them straight down the bottom. Some of us will go up the sides and kick them down in but most of us will just take him right up to the bottom and let's go.
Let's go, cattle. Cattle are moving a lot easier today. You can see there. They're going in the right general direction, and we don't have to push them very hard. Yesterday, a uh, heck of a lot tougher getting up that hill, I got to tell you. Must give you some uh, real pride knowing that you know folks that come before you have done this exact same thing. Yeah, yeah, they know what they're doing. We're just trying to keep it going. It's just like you know my kids, Harmony's dad's done it, and then now our kids are involved with it. There's no other way to raise a family, and I mean people want to come and be a part of it. It's one of those things you're providing the the greatest source of protein for the nation and the world, and and while you're doing it, you're raising a, a great family. And, uh, and having fun. I mean, how's that work? Yeah, you know? that's, that's a pretty good gig. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm amazed, you know, the, the, your guests that have come from around the world, they really get into this. Oh, they're awesome. I mean, they're, they're really, they're fun to be around. They love it. And I like talking to them because they're coming from different parts of the country, different parts of the world. And it's just, it's, they do. They get right in and they just go to work. They're just, they're just here to do it. Our morning break is a chance to see that family togetherness that Dustin was talking about. Oh. Whoa, where are you going? Come here. <laughs> it's deep, Grace. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Rachel? There'll be a lot of people that'll see this, you know, that live in the city that that uh, have not lived that. How, if you had to describe this, how would you describe this lifestyle? Well, it's an uh, outdoor lifestyle where we can enjoy, you know, animals and, and uh, nature and wildlife, all of those things, and watch the way that they interact and, uh, you know, interact with uh, the human population, too. What do you think the, your grandkids, your kids uh, from the last generation, but what do you think your grandkids now are learning from this? When they're on that horse, they're riding up that hill, they're seeing, they're seeing their mom and dad and their grandpa working it, and they're seeing these cattle and the, and the mamas and all those things. What do you think they're learning from all this? Well, it's, uh, it's basically to us, it's just, you know, family working together to accomplish something. You have to approach situations if somebody you know, gets bucked off or somebody has a problem, you just all get together and help each other. Long Islander Jacqueline Johannes is hard at work this afternoon. Not only is it her first cattle drive, it's this city girl's first time ever even camping. That's right. Go big or go home. <laughs> <laughs> you did it. You did yes. it. You feel pretty proud of yourself? Uh, I think I will once I leave. Right now, I know I'm, I still have work to do. I'm not out of it yet, so I think I'll I'll look back on it fondly. See, I did it. Yep. Up, 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 up. Really, every part of this trip was a brand new experience for me, and I, I definitely am happy I'm here, and I'm happy I came. That's crazy. I mean, from New York, I mean, this, you, you never see this. I, my whole life growing up, I was told I can't do this. Don't go by the fire. Don't, don't pet the horse. It's going to kick you. I just, it's so different. Ah, 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 ah. Would you trade that life for this life? Uh, maybe for about a week a year, but full time now. I, I, I don't think I have the uh, stamina to do this. this. They're really something, these cowboys and cowgirls. In the front of the herd, Pat, well, he's lost his Irish accent. He's sounding more like a Utah cowboy every day. It's been a long day, tired and sore. And now there's a new concern. At this rate, the guest shuttle back to the nearest city tomorrow, back to reality, will come before the drive is over. After two days and 20 miles, there's a chance they won't get to see it through. So we push the cattle a bit further so tomorrow's trek will be shorter.
once the cows are safely in their pasture, it's another night at the campground. On this second night, the guests, some call them dudes, are getting to know the Heaton family. While cook and camp manager Mel Heaton works on dinner, a simple toy that Carl has carved out of wood brings the whole campsite together. Guests feel like family. And a dusty clearing in the woods with no running water or electricity feels like the most welcoming place on earth. Wait a second. Would you like a biscuit? Do you want just a half? Or? Along with their hot barbecue, at dinner the guests face a cold fact. Is that where we're headed, though? Yeah. Even after pushing the cows further today, there's still a good chance they won't be there for the conclusion of the cattle drive. It doesn't sit well. We, we're the finishers. We're going to finish it tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And that's, that'll be the bonus. That'll sort of icing on the cake for us. If the dudes want to see it through, we're going to need to get an early start. So Carl makes the call. He decides that we'll get started an hour earlier tomorrow, so it's early to bed, and even earlier to rise the next morning. Cowboy coffee. Well, it's day three, the last day. I think everybody's a little sore, maybe a little tired too, but we've got eight more miles to go, so it's time to saddle up and head out. Let's go, Hershey, come on. I noticed you kind of peeled back from, yeah. what, what are you thinking about? What are you, you know, you're reflecting on the past few days. What's going through your mind? I'm really just trying to savor the last few minutes and just um, trying to make the most of it while, while I have it left. I'm amazed at how rugged and tough these people are. They wake up early, they drive the cattle all day, 13 miles set up camp, keep on going, and they do it again every day. And I, my hat's off to them, literally. I couldn't do it. Talk about uh, seeing all different types of terrain. The first day we went up the side of that mountain, pretty rough. Yesterday was beautiful, sprawling meadows. And today, it is the long, dusty road home. At a morning break, I get an opportunity to talk to Harmony about her father, Carl. Seems like Dad's just kind of the, the string that ties us all together. We'd all be a loose bundle if, if it wasn't for him. But just as importantly as here, he holds us together, but he holds our family together, you know, outside of the ranch. I mean, you know, our family is very tight, very close in areas other than just on the ranch. Our family life is, is good, and I think he's the string that holds us together there, there as well. It's been, it's been tough, it's been good, but once we get to the final destination, I think we've done our job, and yeah, we'll pat ourselves on the back. Greenhorns, yep. starting off. <laughs> What, what memories are you guys going to take home from this? For me, definitely uh, two main things, and, it's, and both related to family, and that's 
family of friends that we've developed the five, the, what do we call ourselves, the fa fabulous the five? Fabulous five. five. <laughs> we've got five, five guests here in this program, and um, we've become very tight, and, and we'll stay in contact with each other, yeah. you know, in the future. And then the other is true family, and that's watching these families um, raise their children in an in a all-American atmosphere that just somebody has to watch to, to believe. Our one o'clock deadline has come and gone, but the cattle are almost there and nobody is calling it quits. These cowboys come lately ensure that their herd makes it to the pasture. It's a rewarding end to a challenging three-day journey. 